Stephanie Allen Booth, and this is Real People. Hi, welcome to the show. I'm sitting down today with Kat Thompson from Emotional Technologies. Kat is a life coach and also has some good information to share with us today about how your body is speaking to you and how you should be listening to it. Welcome to the show, Kat. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, glad to have you. It's been so long since I've seen you. I know. It's, it's a gas. So first, tell us a little bit about emotional technologies. What do you do there? Um, well, I'm fascinated with uh, emotion because I think that it's a technology that we don't understand at all in our culture. And so we're afraid of emotion, especially intense emotion. We tend to uh, run away from things that feel strongly to us and, and so we don't understand the creative power of emotion and how it literally is creating our life moment by moment by moment. So what I do is I've done about 25 years of research to understand how emotion fits in with spiritual, intellectual, and physical wisdom and I've created emotional technologies, <coughs> emotional technologies which is a, um, um, it's a, it's a it's a technology of it in and of itself that puts those four wisdoms together and shows you how to synergistically use those pieces of information to create the life that you'd like to live. Wow. So explain a little bit about the emotions and how they do interact with our lives and, and kind of lead us. Yeah. I believe that emotion is, is like that quantum physics is really the description of what emotion is because it, when in physics which is sort of our intellectual side you have <clears throat> you have um uh the phys the the knowledge of the physical world right and mm -hmm. there's rules and laws that happen in in quantum physics it's a potential so there's not really rules and laws about quantum physics it's really the the it's the knowledge of potential or it's the science of potential. And I feel like in our own lives, emotion is this uh, basis for potential. So it attracts. Emotion is the attractor of mm -hmm. our lives. So we have this masculine energy, which is the part of us that goes after stuff and makes lists and you know does, does things in order to get to a goal. And then we have the feminine side of us, which sits back and says, I'm going to bring it to me by thinking about it, by feeling it, by imagining myself in that situation. So there's a lot of stuff out there like the secret and the laws mm -hmm. of attraction. Really what they're talking about is they're talking about that emotional side where if you have both your intellect and your emotion engaged, you have a much better chance of creating the kind of life that you would like to live. So basically you're saying women are manifestors versus men who are, what would you... No, I wouldn't no? say that. No, no I, because we're okay. both 50% male and 50% oh, female. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so, so we all have, and, and it's just that in the past, men have had the role of the masculine and women have had the role of the right. feminine, but that's all different now. And so it, we really do get to step up and say, you know, I get to use my masculine energy in this way and I get to use my feminine energy in this way. And as those roles are shifting, we're seeing that with our young people. You mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of sexual confusion as well as non-sexual energy because it's really about bringing the masculine and the feminine together in a package that's not sexual, but that is powerful. Wow. Okay. Um, go a little deeper with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, because uh, I'm aware of the left side is feminine, feminine, and the right yep. side is masculine. Yep. And I've been told a time or two that when there's something wrong with my body on one side or the other, I'm having a conflict with that energy. Yes. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today yeah. was body language. So mm -hmm. that because your body has this incredibly beautiful wisdom that it's speaking to you all the time. If you have mm -hmm. pain or you have injury or you have illness, mm -hmm. it is your body trying to give you a message. And the longer you go without understanding that message and continuing to do whatever it is that's causing that, the worse it's going to get until you have a, you know, some sort of a wake up call. So the left side of the body is indeed the feminine side. It's the side that receives. And so, and the, and the masculine side is the right side. It's the side that gives or does, right? So this is your receiving and being side, and this is your doing or giving side. Okay. And so oftentimes when people will come in, the clients will come in and they'll say, you know, my whole left side is, it's like, all right, let's talk about what, what, what belief system do you have about receiving that might be up right now for healing? Because a lot of times the body will bring it up to heal it when you're in a safe place. Oh, okay, okay. When you've created a situation where it's now safe for you to bring up something traumatic from your past that didn't get healed, 
then you'll have a do-over. That's what I call it, a do-over. Do okay. And the do-over is simply a way to move through an old experience with a new consciousness. And that's when the healing happens. And I've seen people's lives transform literally in minutes sitting oh, in my wow. chair. Yeah, I need a, I need a, can I sit in your chair? <laughs> Maybe a time or two. <laughs> oh, wow, that is really, really cool. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not really a stranger to a, a lot of this stuff, but um, I've never really heard it put that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that makes a lot more sense, especially with the energy um, and the, the size of your body, because I did have, I was having problems with my right foot. And somebody's like, oh, you got daddy issues you got to face. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> well, and um, that, that brings me to and the next part of body language, which is that you can divide your body into mm. thirds. And mm. so this is your thinking, this is your doing, and this is your moving, right? So if you, if you have something going on with your right foot, it might not be daddy issues. It might be that the way that you've learned to move forward in life through your masculine side is not working for you. And you're mm. right, and, you're, and your foot's like, no, we need <laughs> to change our approach to doing or to moving forward. And my foot's like, no, step yeah. back. And that's exactly <laughs> what the body, the body stops us and says, uh-uh, you're on the wrong path here. Huh. So I, I find that there's, there's a graphic I brought which will show Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I find that just knowing those five things, left side, right side, and the thirds of the body, you can sit at a, <clears throat> at a stoplight and just say, oh, I'm having a, an ache in my left hip. Okay, that's my left side. It's my receiving side. It's in my hip. This is my, my doing. Uh, you know, what am I doing about receiving? What's happening with receiving? What do I need to do to receive in a better way? You can kind of walk yourself through in the time it takes for the light to turn green enough to get your subconscious to understand that you're open for into information and then something may pop up right. right then or it might show up you might wake up in the middle of the night and go oh my goodness that's what that's about okay so it's usually a situation something in the past that you haven't dealt with on a conscious level or subconscious level i would level? say would that may be true and but also what i really believe a lot of the pain and the injury and the illness that we are experiencing is that we carry belief systems that we learn. You learn most of your belief systems before the age of five. Yeah. And so they're not conscious. You didn't consciously say, okay, I'm going to believe that this is the role of men and women, or I'm going to believe mm -hmm. this about money, or I'm going to believe this about, you know, how life works. That gets kind of embedded in you when you're still too young to have a conscious decision to okay. say yes or no to it. And so as you grow older, your soul says, these beliefs that you're carrying are never gonna get you where you came here to go. And so the only way I can get your attention is by creating situations that make you uncomfortable. Whether they're emotional uncomfortable issues or whether they're physical uncomfortable issues. So either you're gonna start having conflict with other people or having injury in your body or illness, those are all ways mm. that your soul's trying to speak to you to say, you need to get to the root of that belief system and find out why you're carrying it around. And I was mm. so lucky I had a daughter who would not let me get away with anything. But why? <laughs> but why do we believe that? But why is that true? But why do I have to do that? But why is that true? And she would make me walk backwards in everything that I told her as a parent mm -hmm. until I could justify where it came from. And I'm telling you, 80% of those things I would be like, you're absolutely right. That is a stupid thing to believe in. Right, because Let's somebody just told it. me that. Yes. Yeah. And, and then so we yeah. co-created when she was a teenager, we literally co-created a whole set of rules for the, two, for the two of us and how she would be as my daughter and I would be as her parent based on what worked for us and what we both believed together. And it was really, really fun to be with her when she was in high school because oh, okay. we had a very different relationship than I had with my parents. Yeah, well, I'm sure, that, <laughs> you know, that brings up another thing. I mean, the changing uh, of the times, right? Yes. The shifting of the yes. energy and where were we back in the 60s and 70s to where we are now in, you know, the 2018s. Um, there's been a monumental shift and people are really learning more and coming out more yes. and doing a deeper dive. Yes. And uh, all the taboo, I think, is it's th still there. Yeah, but it's been 
the, the door's been opened. Yes. One of the things that I like to say is the reason we didn't succeed in the 60s is because we did not have a generation backing us up. No. Now, these kids have those of us who went through the 60s, and mm -hmm. it is our job to stand up and say, we have the resources, we have the time, and we're going to be there for you. So yeah. if we can support this movement of young people that's happening now, I do believe we can make that shift. Well, yeah, and they're really coming to the top. I mean, the the we were just talking about it earlier, the, the things in the news are really starting to bring the young ones up and saying, we're not going to take this. Yep. No way. Yep. We, we've got voices too. Yep. And I, I, so, but that's for another, that's for another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's for another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love that. Uh, but it goes hand in hand a it bit does. with, with the awakening and yes. what's happening now. Yes. So, um, tell us more. Okay. Let's so I really would like to address emotion because I, so I love my neighborhood Facebook pages because mm -hmm. I belong to three different neighborhood Facebook pages be because of I move around a lot and also just so I stay in the neighborhood pages that mm -hmm. I've already mm -hmm. been part of. And I find it fascinating when people are complaining constantly about, you know, about guns, about violence, about this and that. And yet, as soon as the Japanese Beatles show up, people are like, you know, they're screaming, they're swearing, they're, you know, they're, they're, t they're using the language of war to talk about making war on wasps, making war on Japanese beetles, making war on mice, making mm -hmm. war on anything that makes them uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. I'm constantly on the Facebook page going, you do know, of course, that there is another way that you can deal with this. And in, in my daughter and I live together now. We bought a house together. Oh, and yes, it's awesome. really fun. Um, mm -hmm. Now she's in her 40s and I'm in my 60s and, you know, we're having this great time building a new house or building an old house <laughs> into a new house. And so I, I work with my Japanese beetles. And so every year we give them a specific grapevine that's all theirs. And mm -hmm. last year they let us know that they really love the giant marigolds. Mm. So I was like, all right, we'll plant giant marigolds for you. But so the deal is you can have mm -hmm. this, but you have to stay off the flowers, right? Because mm -hmm. we have a lot of flowers. And so one morning, and so I go out pretty much every morning in the, in the summer with my coffee, and I look to see, and if I see a beetle on a plant that shouldn't be there, I'll walk over to it and I'll say, listen, I'm trying really hard to get people to understand that they can work with you, and that means you have to honor the boundaries. Now, I've given you an entire, the entire grape leaf plant, and mm -hmm. you're gonna get some marigolds next year. So you need to go back and stay there because you have to honor the agreement we have so that I can teach people how to work with you. So we don't poison them, we don't mm -hmm. try to kill them, but I will tell them, like, if you don't honor the rules, I will bring in some chickens. <laughs> chickens. chickens eat Japanese beetles. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's like, we'll, we'll bring in some chickens. If I wonder you're... what my neighbors would think about that. Because <laughs> they are in my backyard. Of course they uh, are. Uh, every, it seems like everything I plant, they yes. love. Roses. It, yes. um, uh, canna lilies, yes. the cannas, they love yes. the cannas. But uh, it's just like, uh, it's just like. But it's relationship. Relationships. Yeah. We teach our children what our boundaries are by saying over and over and over, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And one of the biggest issues that people who come to see me as a therapist have is why don't people honor my boundaries? Well, how, mm -hmm. how many times have you told them what your boundary is? Most people have never told people what their boundary is. They want you to know what their boundary is without mm. actually saying it because they're so afraid of confrontation. Yeah. And so it's like you can't expect somebody to honor a boundary that you haven't spoken, first of all. And secondly, sometimes you have to speak it over and over and over again, just like with a child, because mm. we are in different parts of our bra brain throughout the day. And sometimes those things don't connect. So you could tell me something at three o'clock that I won't remember at seven because that part of my brain at seven isn't really connected mm. to my three o'clock brain because my three o'clock brain was really focused on something different. And this part at seven is focused on something completely different. So there's no connection between that. So I need you to tell me what your boundary is sometimes, many times in order for me to be like, okay, and you have to mean it. You can't well, just say to me, um, I don't like it when you do that. Yeah. You, you have to say, this is how I want to be treated. I'm, I'm thinking that, I, that, uh, that a lot of people probably don't even know what that means to say that, to know what their boundaries really are. When they say, I don't like it when you do that, 
they don't cognizantly think that that's a boundary. Right. They think, this is my boundary. This yeah. is my personal space, and yeah. that's my boundary. Yeah. There's nothing else that's a boundary. Yeah. Um, so, but it's so kind it of like how people, great point. In, in an office situation, you'll yeah. see it everywhere in an office situation where people, you know, and uh, Thelma and Louise, the movie Thelma and mm -hmm. Louise, Su Susan Sarandon said it best, people treat you the way you let them, mm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People treat you, the, treat you the way you let them. And so that's part of what, when people are afraid of emotion, now it's interesting because anger is the emotion of boundaries. But since most people only know anger in its imbalanced state, they're afraid of it. Yeah. Balanced anger is never angry. Balanced anger is conviction that you cannot be pushed off of. Mm -hmm. And I have had people say to me, I just want to make you wrong because they would get so angry at my ability to stand in my conviction and not be pushed off of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to learn how to work with our anger. And one of the things I teach in my workshops is how to go from imbalanced anger, which is angry, to balanced anger, which is mm -hmm. conviction. And there's a process. All of your emotions have an expressional process that takes you from the imbalance to the balance. And anger is our warrior, anger is our protector, and anger is about equality and justice. And it oh. always will tell you the truth. That is really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, since we're talking about the body, I can I can I go into some medical stuff? Absolutely, and say, yeah. Yeah, because I know that you just found out after years that you have been suffering from Lyme's disease yes. and didn't even know it. Yes, it never went diagnosed. So, how did that? Uh, using your own therapy yes. techniques, how did that? <laughs> how I'm glad you, you. I'm how glad you, you asked that. Yeah. So yeah, I did get diagnosed with Lyme's disease in the '90s, and you know they put me on the antibiotics, and then what happens is that the they the basically the the Lyme's go quiescent and they mm -hmm. and they hide and and about 10 years ago I had a very very stressful time of my life and it it came back to this it came they came back mm -hmm. but I didn't know it was Lyme's because you don't have any the symptoms were just mm -hmm. that I was exhausted all the time I could, really couldn't get through the day without a nap and I could only put one thing on my calendar every day and and, and I was depressed everybody mm -hmm. thought I was just suffering from depression well of right. course I was depressed because I'm a very energetic person mm -hmm. and I had no energy and so last July, I went to a doctor who came, who I had, re I researched a bunch of different people actually for my sister who su suffers from Lyme's. Oh. And I was looking for a doctor for her and I, I saw this guy, I called him, he called me back, we chatted for 20 minutes. I was like, man, I'm coming in. I'm coming in to get tested, not for Lyme's. I wanted to find out why has my energy for the past 10 years been going downhill? Mm -hmm. I know I'm in my 60s, but I am healthy. I'm mm -hmm. strong. I should not be so tired all the right, time. Right. So I went in and I said, I want you to rule out Lyme's and tell me what's going on. And so he did the testing and then he got done. He said, well, you have three kinds of Lyme's disease and they've been there for a long time. So <clears throat> I started doing, it's homeopathics. I, mm -hmm. I'm not a big believer in antibiotics, especially mm -hmm. for something like Lyme's because I know too much about how Lyme's moves through the body and antibiotics can't find it because they, burrow, yeah, it they burrow into your mm -hmm. tissue. Mm -hmm. And they eat you. They eat your tissue. Oh so, you know, you need to find another way to do it. And what he told me was an, a healthy immune system is really the only way you can beat Lyme. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing I did when I started doing the homeopathic is I went in and I started talking to the Lyme's. And I said, hey there, I don't want to kill you. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we can't live like this together because you're killing me. So mm -hmm. we, so what are we going to do about that? And it, the Limes talked right back to me and said, well, Kat, if you really were as healthy as you think you are, I wouldn't be able to live in your body. And I was like, ha ha, okay, yes, I know that. And I'm working on that. But in the meantime, I <laughs> so said, how can we... So you smarty pants limes in there. <laughs> I <huh>? did. <laughs> I have a smarty pants limes. But it, but I said, in the meantime, how can we work together? And here's what it said to me, which I found fascinating. It said, you have a habit of saying yes to everything that people ask you to do. And you wear yourself out using up your energy in things that maybe aren't in your best interest. So my job mm -hmm. has been to hold you back so that you can think hard about where you want to commit yourself and then when you commit yourself, you will commit yourself to the exactly the amount of energy that you have available for that commitment. 
<clears throat> that. that blew me away. And I was like, all right, so we're working together. I'm doing the homeopathics. They'll move out mm -hmm. when I have learned to manage my energy by myself and they don't feel like they have to do it for me. So that, I just got a vision in my head of these little limes with their suitcases <laughs> moving out. Um, like, move out, where do they go? Do they go to somebody else? Do they I just disappear into the universe? Don't know. Or do I don't they know. just take Maybe. up residence in the air? Maybe I mean, they just I move on to the next. You, I don't even know how you get limes. How do you get it? Uh, well, it used to be ticks, but now um, Harvard ha has recently come out with a study that says mosquitoes are now carrying it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mosquitoes love me. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. So, but again, um, if your immune system is healthy, you mm -hmm. won't get these things. And I, I also, one of the things about emotion is it's metaphor. Mm -hmm. Emotion doesn't have its own language. You always have to speak about emotion in metaphors because emotion doesn't have a language. Mm -hmm. So the language of metaphor, which is a very feminine language, um, gives you opportunities to look deeper and say, what does this mean? What does this thing mean? So be looking beyond the surface of you're sick, you need medication mm -hmm. to say, why am I sick? What is the sickness trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. Where did the sickness come right. from? And wh when did it come in to my life? What was happening that that sickness showed up? And then what do I need to do to understand how to change my own body, my own mm -hmm. belief systems, my own way that I move through life, so the sickness will leave. I don't think it has to be always about killing something. I right. think you can say, let's work on this together. I don't, I don't want you to live in my body because you're hurting me, but I also mm -hmm. understand why you're here. Now, people right. think I'm nuts. <laughs> Serving a purpose. It's serving a purpose, right? Now, I don't think you're nuts at all. I'm always, I'm always talking to my body and my spirit guides, and, and, and I get answers. All you have to do is ask, right? All you have to do is ask. <laughs> and then be willing to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that kind of gets a little tricky sometimes. Yeah, it does. then the wanting comes in. It's like, but I really want it to be this answer, yes, and yes. that's not the answer I'm getting, yes. you know? So um, that's... Uh, uh, really kind of, uh, I, I, it's just crazy because I'm like sitting here thinking, okay, Lyme's disease is, you know, most people would just go run to the doctor, get on antibiotics. The doctor would never once try to ask you what, what's the underlying cause of this? Why did you get so weak that this would cause you to be exposed to it or, you know, let your defenses down and let this thing in. But it's not just limes, it's all other, all it's many, 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 yeah. uh, many th other yeah. things that would take the same path. Yes. It's just looking for a weak moment. No, we've been brought up in a medical, uh, a, a, a medical environment that says, you get sick, you're a victim, and somebody has to fix you. Yeah. Pills are the answer, but they're not. No. Our bodies are, are perfect self-healers. They if are. If we allow them to they be. They are. So, and the pills interfere with that. We're an ecosystem, right? Yes. So, um, getting back to the ecology of the body, you know, your, your body is the microcosm of the, of the earth itself. So within your body, everything that's happening outside of you is happening within our bodies. And each of us has the power to do the healing that needs to be done by working on ourselves. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I am really like upset about the gun violence and, and the s school shootings mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And how would I go within and find out what, what my body can do to calm myself down? Okay. So uh, that's a great question. And what I would say is this. Within our bodies or within, and within, that includes our emotional bodies as well. You know, we do have all of the stuff that's happening outside happening inside. So the first thing that I would say is if you look at the school shootings, what you're going to see is you're going to see a huge imbalance in the masculine energy. Mm. That's what we're seeing here is we're seeing this sort of explosion of imbalanced masculine energy. So I would go into my body and I would say, first of all, like what's going on on the right side of my body? Is there anything going on in the right side of my body that I can check into? And maybe there's a knee that's been causing me problems for a long time. Because, so because I know body language, I right away go, okay, knees have to do with forgiveness. 
not necessarily forgiveness with daddy or forgiveness with men, but forgiveness with my own masculine energy. So then I might say, well, what are you still beating yourself up about? What are you still judging yourself for in terms of how you moved through your life? Are you still calling yourself lazy? Are you still telling yourself you should have done better with your life? Are you still, you know, beating yourself up because you coulda, woulda, shoulda, oughta? And if that's the case, then you are contributing to that explosion of masculine energy that's now being, that we're seeing in the school because wow. kids have far less capacity to deflect other people's emotional energy. There's only one emotional body on the planet. We right. all share it. Mm -hmm. Kids are very susceptible to what the adults are putting out there. I see. see. So that's one way. So you can ask your body for that help, but you can also go into your emotional body and say, where am I angry? So that's the opposite of what we hear most of the time. It's like, if I'm holding something in, it's just me, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you're saying the total opposite is exactly. true. When you're holding something in, it's beaming out of you it's like going out to look for somebody yeah. to express it ah. so when i teach oh, okay. anger okay. work my i say you set up an intent and the intent is i'm going to do my anger work with the intention that this energy transforms here and it doesn't go outside of my own field and then i have people screaming and hitting and kicking and you know all of this and then you get your transformation and your aha moment Hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's what I'm angry about. It has nothing to do with that person. It has to do with me and what I believe. And I don't want to believe that anymore. So that's yeah. how we can begin to pull energy out of that, the school shootings right there. Thanks again, Kat. You're welcome. And you thank, just, you for, thank you for having me. It was oh, really fun. You're so welcome. It was just a pleasure. So thanks so much. Until next time, I'm Stephanie Allensworth, and this is Real People. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.